Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to my channel for another Hot Toys DC figure unboxing and review video. It's honestly been quite some time since I've said those words. Hot Toys, please, you gotta start showing DC just a little bit more love. But nevertheless, we are taking a look at none other than CW's version of The Flash. Now, for those of you who don't know, I really did enjoy the first few seasons of The Flash and Arrow as well. So yeah, I have been looking forward to this release and finally he is here. So yeah, I can't wait to get him out of the box. Now, I got mine from ToysWonderland.com. Link for that is, of course, down in the description below. They have 12 month installment plans and an awesome reward system. What we are going to do now though is get the box laying flat in the light box and do the unboxing. Here of course we have the box art and right off the bat yeah there's a lot of red here but that makes total sense because the Flash is also known as the Scarlet Speedster. We do have a massive image of Grant Gustin in the season one Flash suit and the entire thing is covered in this gorgeous metallic finish. Along the side we do have a gold flash logo that's suitably metallic as well and then that super iconic image from season one of the lightning bolt with the flash down the bottom as well as all of the legal information. Now you can slide the top cover off to get a sneak preview at the figure inside but there's no real need to do that because we're literally about to take him out of the box. Now yes I have seen all of the blogger photos and to be honest they have let me down ever so slightly. I'm hoping this figure is better in hand. And here we have him. Honestly first in hand impressions right out of the box. I don't think it's anywhere near as bad as some people were saying but we will unpack that throughout the course of the video. Speaking of unpacking things, what we are going to do now is get all of his accessories laid out in the light box and take a closer look at everything he comes with. Here we have all the parts and pieces, well except one. We will be taking a look at the cardboard backdrop in the very next clip. Now starting off with the display base first, it's one of those modern day Hot Toys rectangular style bases. It works perfectly for Flash, it's simple yet very effective. On the surface we do have this asphalt print, kind of like potentially a city street, you do have some road markings, then on the front you do have the CW, the Flash, fastest man alive etched onto a gorgeous metal nameplate. And seeing as he is a speedster, he does come with a dynamic waist clamp, but you still have to be careful as these are super strong, so they can sometimes do some damage to the suit itself and also a regular dynamic flight pole. Now I personally won't be having my flash in a crazy dynamic running pose and I think you'll find out why throughout the course of the video. Now to go along with your running poses, he does come with a bunch of these lightning effects. They are similar to the ones that we've seen from other figures and I do love the gradient. Some pieces are slightly more translucent, some are a little bit more metallic and gold and others are straight up a nice dark and deep orange. You will see these on the figure a little bit later in the video. Now let's talk about the elephant in the room for some and it was for me. When I saw the blogger photos I wasn't overly impressed with this head sculpt. Does it fare better in hand? Yeah, a little bit though. It's not a huge improvement now that I've seen it in hand. I can't honestly see the Grant Gustin likeness. Maybe from that angle right there, but I think it's slightly too smooshed in. It's a little bit too thin. I do however love the fact that it is a magnetic head, but that doesn't really make up for the fact that I don't really see the likeness. Now I don't normally do this but I do have the so so toys flash and I think the likeness is straight up superior on it. The head sculpt is a little bit bigger, the flash logo earpieces are actually made of real die cast and you can swap the mouth plates out for an angry mouth plate, the paint applications are definitely better on the Hot Toys one, it's more lifelike, the complexion looks a lot better, but I think the likeness on the Soso -so head sculpt is superior. 
This one works. It's not great, it's not terrible, but honestly, I don't think I'm going to be displaying my Flash figure wearing this sculpt. Well, which one are you going to use, Justin? Simple. This one right here. I absolutely love this head sculpt. I can see Grant Gustin 110%. I love the sculpt, I love the skin texture, the paint applications, the hair looks fantastic. So yeah, this one will very likely be going on display on me flash figure. Now to go along with this head sculpt you also get the cowl that can hang along the back of his neck. Now this is something that honestly I don't really think is necessary if you wanted to go without it but it should technically be there because when he's not wearing the cowl it always in the show did hang back across his neck. You do still have the two flash logo symbols for the ears these pieces are separate though, and they do feel a little bit fragile, so do be careful not to break them off. It is sculpted and painted with a very nice level of detail. There are washers, there's some gradient, and yes, you can see the top part is a separate piece, with the eyes being actually see-through, so you can see underneath. It does a convincing job of looking like the mask. He does also come with an alternate flash accessory. Technically, this isn't meant to be worn by him, but if you wanted to, there's nothing stopping you from popping it on the Barry Allen head sculpt. It sits a little bit high, it looks a little bit goofy, but yeah, you could absolutely do it. For those wondering what on earth this is, this is Jay Garrick's helmet, the original Flash, and I absolutely love it. The silver metallic is suitably shiny, I also love the pitting and the little bit of wash down in the crevices, just to make this thing look slightly aged. This is an awesome throw-in accessory. I'll absolutely be popping it on the corner of the base, and then that's how it's going to be displayed in my collection. Now you do have three different options for the chest symbol. This one right here, I'm pretty sure it goes this way, is the tachyon projector. This piece in the show does clip onto his chest logo, and the same thing can be said for the figure. It pegs in, you do have a really nice level of sculpting, and you also have some washers down in the crevices, just to make this thing look suitably metallic. Next up you have either the Season 2 or Season 1 Flash logos. The gold is gorgeous. It's very shiny, it's very rich, and I also love the choice of the red and the white. It's not really an overly stark white, it is a little bit greyer, but trust me, that works on the suit, and you will see them both on the figure later on in the video. Lastly, he comes with two open palm hands and two fists. That's kind of about it. I wouldn't have minded seeing maybe a few more options for the hands. At the very least, they are nicely sculpted with a bunch of texture, and he does have that two-tone effect, just like on the suit itself. What we are going to do now, though, is get the cardboard backdrop piece out here and take a closer look. Now, just quickly before we bring the figure himself out here, I wanted to talk about the backdrop. I love this. It is a classic piece of artwork based off the posters for Season 1 of The Flash. You've got the lightning bolt and it leads all the way to the front where you'd have The Flash standing on his display base. Maybe even in a running pose so it kind of looks like he's come out of the background and he's blasted his way into your display case. I also love the little easter eggs. You've got Star Labs, you've got the Queen building and you also have Stag in the background. This is an awesome piece and it's great for some figure fatigue. Photography. What we are going to do now though is get the Flash himself out here and take a closer look. Here we have him standing straight up and down in the light box, no crazy poses or accessories or anything like that. And so far, to be totally honest, I haven't been overly wowed, but I haven't been overly let down by this figure either. And we will dissect what that means in the very next clip, but for the most part, yes, it does what it says on the tin. It's a CW version of The Flash by Hot Toys. I think some people were a little bit let down for some very key reasons. The colours of the suit, 
the head sculpts, and also potentially the articulation, but I'm pleased to report that some of those aren't the biggest issues in the world. So what we are going to do now is take him off the rotating turntable, punch in and take a closer look at the details. Here we have him up close and personal. And in just a second, we will be swapping out the head sculpt for the Grant Gustin one and the chest logo for the season one version, because I am curious how that red is going to sit on the rest of the body. Speaking of the body, that's, in my opinion, one of the pros. The proportions on this guy are great. Now, some people immediately jumped on the bandwagon of saying, oh my gosh, he looks absolutely horrible. The colours are inaccurate, he looks awful, the head sculpts are gross. And yes, I do understand your complaints. Trust me though, in hand, this guy doesn't look anywhere near as bad as he did in some of those promo pics. You've already heard what I had to say about the head sculpt, but let's talk about the colour difference between the fabric and the pleather. It's there. There's no denying it, the fabric is just far too light. It should be darker, the screen use suit did have a little bit of contrast between the different material sections, but it wasn't as stark as this is. So yes, you are right, it is inaccurate. These black squiggly lines also shouldn't actually be black squiggly lines. There was a little bit of gradient and shading here to these sections on the real suit, Whereas Hot Toys have just gone a little bit too far. These are an absolute eyesore. Your eyes are immediately drawn to them because this black is a very harsh colour on this brighter red. I do, however, like the material choice. It's nice and soft and supple, the screen printing looks great, and he does have all of the accurate gold panel lining. That can be said for the entirety of the suit. I also love the way they've done the belt. These lightning sections though are sticking up a little bit further than the belt itself, so do be careful not to snap the ends of these lightning bolts off when you get a little bit more adventurous with your posing. I also love the very subtle weathering on the belt buckle. That's something they really didn't have to do, but it adds some depth and texture to a piece that otherwise would be completely flat and boring. Then of course, around the back, there is a bunch of pleather style texture. Now, yes, we do have to talk about the pleather. This entire pant section is pretty much made of it. Yes, there are some material sections wrapping around, but for the most part, they are made of pleather. Will this stand the test of time? Who knows? We'll have to wait and see as the years go by, but for now, at the very least, it looks accurate and it feels super nice and soft and supple, and it does move out of the way when it comes to posing. Yes, there is some bunching, yes, there is some creasing, but that's kind of unavoidable when it comes to a suit such as this. But for those of you wondering what the head sculpt and the other logo option looks like, here we have it, and honestly, I really like the way this looks. I've already told you I love this head sculpt. I think it works perfectly as Grant Gustin. I can see the likeness, paint applications are stunning, and it fits very well on the body. The neck isn't too long, nothing is oversized. It looks exactly like it should. I also love the red Flash logo. Some people did say that, oh, why are they making this suit? I would much prefer insert later season suit. Yes, I'm right there with you. Those suits would have been awesome, but this one has a classic retro charm. This was the first suit we saw him in, and I love it. One thing that I don't love, however, is the fact that they didn't use a split-cut boot design. The detail and paint applications on the boots are fantastic. I do love the hexagonal tread on the underside, but why, oh why, did they not put that split cut in? Will it affect articulation? Well, I think you already know the answer, but we'll touch on that a little bit later in the video. So far, yeah, this guy isn't as horrible as some people were claiming, but is he 100% flawless? No, I really don't think he is. Now for a quick side-by-side -side comparison, here we have the CW Flash by Hot Toys alongside the Green Arrow by Soso -So Toys. Now I said this earlier in the video, usually I don't show third-party figures in reviews for official 
Essential Hot Toys products. I like to keep it clean, let's just say. But when we have the companies selling those official Hot Toys products, literally going out and copying beat for beat the formula of YouTube reviewers, I thought to myself, hey, let's show people something that those other reviews both can't and won't show you. So this right here is one of those things. I love the way these two look together. Yes, the Flash, for some reason, is slightly taller. I think that's down to the body that So So Toys used for the Green Arrow. It's a simple fix though. Use some ankle extenders and then Ollie will be slightly taller. But either way, even though they are from different seasons, I still think this looks Glorious. I cannot wait to display them in the collection alongside the Batwoman and whoever else those third party companies decide to release from the CW verse. Next up, here we have the So So Toys version of The Flash, and these are two very different design philosophies. Plus, the So So Toys one came out ages ago, so you can see it's definitely starting to show its signs of age. If they were to tackle it nowadays, I think they could do a phenomenal job, but at the very least, the color scheme looks better. I love the way this suit looks. The texture is on point, the colors look great, the pinstriping is fantastic, and the head sculpt, as we already mentioned earlier, I think is superior to the Hot Toys one. Plus, the chest logo is metal and magnetic, so you are getting some bonuses. The Hot Toys one I think wins out on the Grant Gustin head, the number and quality of the accessories, plus the quality of the body. He is slightly taller, so he is more in line with modern day Hot Toys releases, but if I had to honestly sit down and pick between these two, it would be a pretty difficult choice. Next up, here we have another So So Toys release being their Dark Speedster, aka Zoom. These two look great together. I'm hoping that one day we get a reverse flash because he would be the ultimate companion piece, but for now, these two look awesome standing side by side. I'm just super glad there are companies out there willing to take a risk and make more CW verse stuff. The line can be rather expansive, there are a bunch of characters that I know we would love to see, but for now we already have a pretty darn good offering. And lastly, here we have Ezra Miller as the DCEU's Flash alongside the CW version. And I remember when Ezra Miller was cast as the Flash for the DCEU, there was a massive uproar. The Flash show was at the peak of its popularity. Everyone was saying, what do you think in Warner Brothers? Why aren't you using Grant Gustin? For some reason, they couldn't wrap their head around the fact that it was a different universe and a different Flash, but fast forward a couple of years and these two actually shared an on-screen moment. They met in one of the crossover episodes and I loved it. Technically, Grant Gustin was in a different suit, but I loved the back and forth between them, how Ezra Miller said, oh, you know, it's cosplay, right? It was awesome, so I am very tempted to display these two on the same shelf. Now, before we move on, the thought did pop into my head, hmm, I wonder what the So So Toys head sculpt would look like on the Hot Toys body, and I for one am super glad I decided to try it out, because this is straight up awesome, I love the way it looks. The slightly larger head, he does have that seamless look to the cowl without the break in the head for the magnetic connection, and I think the likeness is superior. This absolutely works. I'm honestly tempted to display my Hot Toy CW Flash like this, if I wasn't already so enamored by the Grant Gustin head sculpt. For those wondering what the Flash looks like standing in front of his diorama backdrop, here it is, and I personally really do like the way it looks. The background is so classic quintessential CW Flash, and having the figure stand in front of this force perspective image kind of gives you the illusion of a little bit more depth. This is going to be Awesome for those taking pics of this CW Flash, or hopefully some future CW speedsters from other companies. Just going over articulation. Now bear in mind this is my personal copy of the figure, so I'm going to be a little bit more careful. I'm sure when you get yours in hand, you can push the joints slightly further than I'm willing to go. Now the head sculpt itself is on a magnet, which you all know I love magnetic head sculpts. It goes back the full way, 
Same thing with going forward, plus there is a ball joint at the neck, so you get a ton of range. You do have swivel and a ton of pivot side to side. The arms themselves will go up to there. They will go forward and back on soft ratchets, butterfly joint at the shoulder, which actually gives you a ton of range, swivel at the bicep, a double bend at the elbow that goes the full way, and a regular 1-6 scale wrist peg. The torso does crunch forward and back, swivel and pivot side to side. The legs will go forward to there and hold. They will go out to there, swivel at the upper thigh, a ratcheted double bend at the knee for just past 90. And because they didn't go with a split cut boot design, you only get some swivel down here for the ankle. Just going over the three cool and three annoying things. The first annoying thing, and I'm pretty sure y'all could have guessed this from the get go, why the hell is there no split cut boot design here? They could have absolutely done it, there's even a natural creasing point where they've sculpted them in. This guy is a speedster. That means you need maximum range of motion out of the ankles so you can make it look like he's running authentically. But they didn't do it. I don't know why. It's just absolutely perplexing. The second annoying thing is the overly heavy shading for these parts right here. Yes, these lines are present on the screen use suit, but it's airbrushed and there's a gradient. There isn't just a straight up black squiggly line over the top here. This is just far too harsh. The third annoying thing has to do with the masked head sculpt. They had the perfect opportunity to give us a swap out mouth plate. In fact, if you take the head off, you can literally see the mouth plate in its entirety. They could have done it, they should have done it. Grant Gustin as the Flash is a pretty expressive character, so I was hoping they were going to do it. But then again, at the end of the day, this is what we're stuck with. The first cool thing is the interchangeable logo gimmick. I love this. I still wish they were magnetic, but at the very least it's a super firm and sturdy connection. And this is something that they didn't have to do, but I'm glad they did. So we can go for a season 1 or season 2 appearance. The second cool thing is more of a byproduct of the suit design from the CW network, but I really love the fact that there are these stretchy sections built into the knees, and also up here for the elbows. When you bend them, they do stretch apart and reveal that fabric on the underside. That means the suit isn't anywhere near as restrictive as I thought it was going to be. The third cool thing is that they did go with magnets in the head sculpt. That means you can get an absolutely enormous range range of motion out of a design that usually would be rather restrictive. This chin guard that comes down would normally block the sculpt, but to be honest, I am very impressed with the way this works. Just wrapping up on the Hot Toys CW Flash. Now going into this, I was really excited. I'm a fan of the first couple of seasons of the show, which this suit is based off. However, I had seen all of the comments online, and for the most part, I agreed with them. I'd seen the blogger photos, and my first initial gut reaction was, oh my god, what is that monstrosity? But now that I've spent a little bit of time with him, posed him up, checked out the accessories, I can honestly say he's not that bad. He's not an absolutely flawless home run like I was hoping he was going to be. The suit colour is inaccurate. There's no two ways about it. It shouldn't be as drastic of a difference as it is between the fabric sections and the pleather. However, I can get around that. The posability is great. The accessories are awesome. I'm even starting to warm up to the lightning effects, which I really didn't think I was going to use. Plus, I love the Grant Gustin head sculpt. He does have those weird black squiggly lines on his chest area, but if you can pose it to where you can't really see them, then yes, it does look even better. It kind of sounds like I'm making excuses for him. Trust me, I'm not. When you get this guy in hand, you'll see he's not as bad as some people are making him out to be. Which, yes, I know we can all jump to conclusions before actually seeing him in hand, because that's just the nature of the beast. We're spending money on these things, we want them to be as good as possible, so I totally understand where y'all are coming from, but trust me, this is still a fairly 
decent release. Now I got mine from ToysWonderland.com. Link for that is of course down in the description below. They have 12 month installment plans and an awesome reward system. While you are down there, why not check out the link to Six Scale Network, the Facebook group. Come along, chat figures, share photos of your collection, and of course, see what's coming up next on the channel. Like, comment and subscribe and we'll catch you in the next video.